watch this. There's a bass over here. He's struck at it once. A nice bass. That's why I switched to this lure. Uh oh, he's staying put. That means he's stuck. He's stuck on something. He's stuck on something down there. Oh dang! Come on, get out of there. There we go. There we go. Oh dang! That fish is on there and he's stuck. There we go. There we go. How do you like that bass? Oh, that's a nice one. That is a nice fish. He probably five pounder. And he went for the hair buck. <laughs> Let me show you how to tie that hair bug. Mustad hook or any other hook, about a number one or so. Uh, anything about that size doesn't really matter whatever you like start by threading it toward the back midway on this particular fly I really don't want to do so much deer hair so I'm going to actually build the fly toward the first half of the or the front half of the hook that way there won't be so much uh, deer hair to use I'm using a uh, uh, feathers like these to start the base. Uh, this will be the underside of the fly. A couple of feathers here. Like that. And you leave them pretty close to full length. And all you want to do is you just want to get a, f a feather on each side. Hang down, it doesn't have to be perfect. They can cross over, it doesn't really matter. Tighten them down. Cut off the excess here. Now, on top of that, I am going to go ahead and put the flash in that I have. That's just this normal everyday flash about three strands on each side gonna be a little wasteful today because it's easier it's faster let them hide down you'll trim off the excess length once you get the whole fly built uh, and then I want to put on top of that a slightly darker color I'm going to use purple uh, and these are these are nice, fairly transparent feathers. Um, color combinations, I don't know how much it matters, but these feathers need to be a little bit longer than the than the feathers that are on the underneath. It doesn't hurt to make these flies big. Uh, bass bass will try to eat anything that they can they think they can get it in their mouth they're going to try to eat it and these are primarily large fish flies I mean that's that's what I fish for with these flies is is largemouth bass and they are not shy about taking these things got plenty of pictures on the web of the fish that I've caught with these particular flies. Now I need, that's pretty much all that I need there. I'm going to go ahead and trim my flash just short of the length of the longest feathers. When this thing gets wet it'll tend to stick together a little bit more. 
it'll, it'll go through the water pretty much like that. It is, it is going to end up being rather translucent. Uh, there's not a lot of mass in this fly. Um, I think I'm going to put in just a little bit of this to kind of give it uh, more action in the water. Just a nice poof of that stuff there. I think they call that marabou. Just kind of get it so it shrouds over the hook, nice and even. Tie it down. Cut it off. Wrap it down a little more. Now that that kind of gives it more of a body. I may even come back after I've tied this fly. I may come back and shorten out this part of the the fly. Just just butcher it right out of there. Take it out from about here, so that it doesn't extend that far down or that far back. Now I need some black feathers to top this fly off. I think I'll use these. They have a nice white stripe on them. These are big, big feathers. You see what these look like. I get a couple of those. They're nice dark. I got a nice white stripe down them, but I don't think that matters. All right. Let me go back up here a little bit. Put that so that it's on top. Looks like it's laying about the way I want it to. Same thing on this side, making it approximately the same length toward the back of the fly. Those laid in there real nice. I'm going to cut the front half of this off. If you really wanted to, you could just twirl that around, twirl these two around, and that'd be the fly. But I'm going to use deer hair, it's not, not just feathers. Cut that off. A little excess there. You can see that, and I'm going to. Get a few more wraps on this to help snug it up. It is a messy business this fly tying. See now I'm getting now I'm getting the layers. I've got the darkest layer on top. There's a little bit coming out. The little bit of the fuzz coming out the top. That's fine. Doesn't matter. I want to start with my black deer hair. I'm gonna. Not, I'm not, I'm gonna tie in a pretty good clump to start out with and this is kind of the guard for the top of the fly it helps keep things streamlined you can see that how that is I'm going to pull some of that junk out of there I want it to this this part of the deer hair I want to be only on the top of the fly and you can see how it flared out nicely I'm going to take that and shrink it back. Spread it out just a little bit. Sink back. I'm going to leave most of these longer strands that go over the fly to kind of to kind of encase it. It 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 really helps to to keep the feathers in in the place when you're pulling it through the water. Push that back. Let me put a couple more wraps in here. And I'm going to get some more black. And I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to reverse the way that I put this on so that the, the cut ends go back right on top. And that's, that's split about the distance that I need it. It's about halfway up the hair. I am going to cut a lot of this back when shaping the head. That's all I need to do. I'm going to do the same thing again with the black hair. Get me a nice clump of it. Same thing. I'm going to take the thick end, the cut end, face it back. Get it to go around here for me. I don't like the way that that kind of went on the hook. I'm going to let it go anyway. 
wall this back. Force a nice, pretty good uh, thread on that base to push that hair back. Now what I want to do is take my yellow deer hair and build the underside of the fly. I'm, I'm not real big on super bright colors or a lot of it. So I'm only going to put one clump of subdued yellow. It's not super bright. Some of the, some of the uh, on this deer hair tail, you can see that the center of this is much is much darker. Uh, I like I like that color better. It just doesn't doesn't flare up as much. And this is a little bit tricky to get this to stay on the bottom but not impossible. Let it go wild if you want and you're going to cut most of it off anyway. And tuck it back. Hope it stays on the bottom. Now sometimes I'll red nose these things. I use red deer hair and, and put a red nose on them. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is simply top this one with more black not a whole lot but just to kind of finish off the fly and and build that head just a little bit and do the same thing mount it backward with the thick side the thick part of the hair is facing back I'm going to try to make sure that this stays nice and tight to the top because this is what's going to make the head of the fly. And here we go. We're going to build that head up and, and force the, the hair back and, and make it flow back over the, the uh, body of the fly. There it goes. Now it's building up nice and even. Don't be afraid to put lots of thread on there. That's what actually holds the shape of the fly and holds it together for that matter. I'm going to push it back just a little more and then I'm going to wrap it. You could use a brighter thread like chartreuse or red, um, orange. You could use any color thread you want. And it, sometimes it adds a little bit of dimension to the fly, makes it stand out a little bit. I tend to use subdued colors because that's what is most prevalent in bait fish, which is what this is trying to imitate. This is trying to imitate a, a sunfish of some sort. The contrast between the, the white stripe and the, and, the, and the black feather, now that shows up. And the contrast between the yellow and the, and the black, uh, that's what the fish see. And I think that's what they come after because that's what makes it look most like a uh, a bait fish. Super glue the thread. I like using lots of glue. I don't like my uh, flies come apart. Let that dry for just a second. Cut my thread. Now I have to give the fly its haircut. I usually start with the bottom and don't be afraid to cut like mad. You'll still get all the colors you need. To make it so that this fly uh, will, will float in the proper orientation like that, you have to take enough of the hair off the bottom of the fly. Uh, you do that um, to make sure that it does float in the water like this. The, the wedge shape of the head is what makes it dive. Uh, these things, they get saturated. They will not, um, they don't really sink. They, they, they kind of suspend and it kind of depends on the, on the weight of the hook. This particular hook is a very light metal. It's not stainless steel. Uh, which I actually prefer to use stainless steel uh, in these in these 
most of these deer hairs because it does get a little more weight and it will sink a little bit more. This fly will probably stay on the surface or just under the surface. They do make a lot of racket going through the water because the head is so large on them. But this thing ought to have a pretty good uh, swimming action to it between the long feathers in the back and when they get wet they'll group together they'll they'll stick together a little better that's interesting and I'm going to take off a bunch of this hair that, that down a little bit and that is almost the way I want it that one turned out pretty even it's got a little bit of flash There you go. That fly is ready for the water. The nice thing about deer hair, uh, I always have a pair of scissors with me on my little pocket knife, multi-tool. Uh, and quite oftentimes I will butcher them or give them a haircut in the field, especially if I don't like the way the, the fly is coming through the water or if I think on, if it's a little too, the head's a little too bulky, maybe it's not diving right or something. I'll start cutting it. Uh, back all that hair down. That right there is a pretty good fly. That should catch fish. You see the underside of it is lighter in color. The top is darker. Uh, when it's going through the water, it, it'll, it'll pulsate in various ways. And that should do it. And even though that fly sat in my fly box for nearly two years before I pulled it out and used it, it did work, as you can see. I've made at least a hundred variations of that fly. Mostly it's the same construction, just different colors of hair and feathers. Uh, stock tank bass can be a little different, but at any rate, y'all try one up. Give it a shot. Thanks for watching. Y'all be good. Bye.